Hello guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of my team selector and preview ahead of tomorrow's game against West Brom in the Premier League. The Premier League is back, Chelsea are back, international break is over. Hope you had a good international break, got rested, got ready for the end of the season. I hope as well you're having a great start to your Easter weekend and let's hope it's a happy Easter for Chelsea Football Club. In particular, of course, tomorrow's game, the top four race. It heats up now in the Premier League. We've got the Champions League first leg of the quarterfinal against Porto in midweek. We've got the FA Cup semi-final coming up. It's going to be a big end to the season. Make sure you don't miss any of the coverage on the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And uh, some people have been commenting about uh, missing certain videos recently in terms of their notifications not coming up through YouTube. Two ways to get around this because I know many YouTubers suffer from this in terms of their notifications from subscribers not showing up when I do upload a new video. Um, go to my community page on my YouTube channel. I, I post every time I upload a new video. So that's a sure way to always get my new videos. But also on Twitter at Son of Chelsea, I post all my new videos on there as well. So there are two ways if you're not getting the notifications, bookmark those pages and you'll always get my uh, new uploads through there. So that's the best way to do it. But Getting into this, uh, before I get into team news and looking at West Brom, my lineup, manager of the month. Thomas Tuchel wins manager of the month in the Premier League for March. Fully deserved. Chelsea did not concede a goal in March in the Premier League. Liverpool nil, Chelsea won. That was the big result for me in that month. Uh, Chelsea 2, Everton nil, and a nil nil draw at Ellen Road against Leeds. I mean, it's a testament and I think it's sort of a landmark for Thomas Tuchel. He's had quite a few in terms of big results. I think about the Spurs win. I think about the both ties of the Atletico Madrid game, the Liverpool win in particular last month. These are big landmarks, I think, for Thomas Tuchel very early on in his Chelsea reign and he could have some even bigger ones uh, by the end of this season. He really could. So it's a testament to what he's done so far. It was great to see him back in the press conference speaking about Chelsea, speaking about football. He dropped some gems in particular about Timo Werner that I'll get into, but um, fully deserved uh, for Thomas Tuchel. It really is, given how he's transformed Chelsea, the mood around Chelsea. And uh, just great to see. And let's hope it continues. Let's hope he picks up more Manager of the Month awards in his Chelsea career as head coach. Um, but let's take a look at West Brom. They're struggling, they really are, and, and I do think they are going to get relegated once again. I just can't see them surviving. You know, even if they get a, an incredible result tomorrow, I mean, it's still going to be an uphill battle for them for the rest of the season. I don't think Sam Allardyce is going to keep his uh, record going of not being relegated uh, from the Premier League unless he intentionally gets himself sacked at this point and, and resigns, and that can keep his record. But if he stays to the end of the season and, and you know, sticks with West Brom, I think he will be relegated and because their form just hasn't been good enough this season. They haven't been good enough for for the Premier League. They've got some decent results. I mean, even with Sam Allardyce, and I still... I'm not quite sure why Bilic was let, was let go when he was. I'm not quite sure. There's Unlike with Chelsea, there's not a justification for making that move for me. Uh, still, I, I don't know what has really radically changed from West Brom. They've got okay results. They got a, a decent draw against Man United. They went, of course, away to Liverpool. I think, was it December time they got a draw? But we know what the style of football is going to be. There isn't much creativity in this team, especially without Conor Gallagher on loan from Chelsea. Really beneficial loan for Conor Gallagher. Um, it's been a great year year for him personally despite being a club that is likely going to get relegated probably great experience for him and uh, considering what happens in the summer you know will he come back get a, get a chance in pre-season under Thomas Tuchel go back out and loan somewhere else in the Premier League we'll have to wait and see but they'll be missing him and that's of course a key threat going into tomorrow's game creatively for West Brom um, Maitland Niles is a really impressive player on loan from Arsenal I think he's leaving Arsenal at the end of the season um, in midfield he's finally got some more minutes in the Premier League I think he's a good talent Pereira's um, their top goal scorer and probably their biggest creative threat so if you look in there but we know how direct it's going to be Chelsea are in for a physical game and as well up against a low block so we know what we're getting from West Brom here it's going to be a challenging game for Chelsea the rhythm the passing has to be slick it can't be passive but let's go into my predicted lineup um, team news N'Golo Kante not involved uh, tomorrow which is a big miss it really is um, I did think Kante would miss this game even if he was fit I, don't, I didn't think he should be starting this game I don't think even if he's ready say for the Palace game next weekend shouldn't be starting that game the way Tuchel is speaking he's absolutely going to be out of this game he's very likely missing the Porto first leg which is a big miss in the Champions League and probably will be missing the Palace game as well. So let's hope Kante can be back for the second leg against Porto, because that's right after the Palace game as well. It's on those three midfielders in that double six, whoever he picks the two out of the three, Jorginho Kovacic and even Billy Gilmore, who hasn't got a sniff in the Premier League so far under Thomas Tuchel. I expect it still to be Georgian cover, but as you can see, a, a player who has 
been back available in training fit once again Thiago Silva I think Thiago will come into the middle of the back three here I just think it's a great opportunity to get Thiago back in the first team. Um, I think what happens beyond that, we're not quite sure because Christensen has been so good. I think Christensen, Thiago Silva and Rudiger could be a back three. On the left or the right in particular, keeping Rudiger. I think Rudiger will come back into the side here. Um, had a difficult time with Germany in midweek, but he's been so good for Chelsea. He really has. It's tough to tell because... There's so much rotation that could take place here. And I think we've seen so many different lineups from Thomas Tuchel. And it's very hard to really gauge what he's going to do from game to game at times in certain positions and where he's going to prioritise. So we have to trust him. But this is what I'd personally go for. I think as well, passing from deep, Thiago Silva is so good offensively, uh, creatively as well, in, in particular a team who are going to try and congest the middle of the pitch. And maybe Thiago could be a good player from deep to get back into the side here. He's been classed with Chelsea this season. It's great to have him back after that long injury. Rhys James had a good international break with England. I think we'll keep his place at right wing back. We could see Callum hudson doy in a game you know when we think about when Callum thrived in his position under Tuchel very early on it was against teams who sat very deep. I think he played it against Newcastle, against Burnley. So potentially you could see Callum hudson doy start here at right wing back if if Tuchel really wants to get him into the side. Um, didn't have the best international break even I think had a little bit of a knock um, during that international break as well but I'm going to stick with Rhys James because I do do think he's really nailing down that position for me. Georgie covers a double six. Ben Chirwell playing really well at the moment. He had a good international break. Played really well against Sheffield United in the FA Cup game. Him and Alonso, it feels like a 50-50 at times, doesn't it? And you could see the height and physicality of West Brom being a reason as to why you'd want Alonso in this team as a threat offensively in a game where Chelsea need more numbers forward. I can absolutely understand that. But on form, I just think Chirwell's edging it for me at the moment. But then you could see the rotation where Chirwell plays this game. Alonso plays uh, Wednesday against Porto. We'll have to wait and see. And then going into that front three, I'm going with the front three that played against Atletico Madrid. Thomas Tuchel was really defensive and I think not defensive in like a negative way, but really backed Timo Werner. I felt that was the most interesting part of his press conference today, where he really backed Timo. He spoke about Timo's struggles in front of goal. Of course, he was asked about that terrible miss for Germany. And he was saying how he speaks to Timo Werner and trying to sort of instill confidence and belief in Timo that he's been scoring since he was like five or six years old. Those goals will come back into his game. And just the way I, I suggest, please go and watch the press conference and listen to what Tuchel said himself. Um, but I felt that if I was a player and I had Tuchel as my coach, I think that'd be a perfect scenario. He dropped a really funny analogy as well in reference to Timo Werner's current situation and just being a little bit more maybe reserved or calm about the situation. And Tuchel speaks so intelligently and measured about things and it's just great to have a coach like Tuchel at the moment because he really explains things in, in a lot of detail and also confirms helping me and my team selector that Timo Werner will be starting tomorrow so Timo Werner for me starts on the left of the front three Kai Havertz is the number nine I think he's thrived in his position recently for Chelsea I really think he has and it said a lot to me that against Sheffield United when Chelsea were lacking fluidity in that attacking part of the pitch, Ziyech and Havertz came on and suddenly Chelsea looked a lot more dangerous in those closing minutes, eventually getting the goal. Hakim Ziyech, um, I don't think had a lot of workload in the international break. Um, he should be full of confidence. He scored in his last two Chelsea games. I want to keep him on the pitch for this game. Creatively as well, against a low block, I think you need the creativity of Hakim Ziyech, a player in confidence. The reason I'm not playing Mason Mount here, Mason played basically all the minutes for, for Gareth Southgate. I think it was a little bit ridiculous how much he played. Um, he played about 45 minutes against uh, San Marino, which was good, but then played a majority of the game against Albania where, where he scored. And then he played the full 90, uh, full 93 minutes, I think it was, against uh, Poland on Wednesday as well. So he's had a really taxing international break. And I'm thinking about the need for rotation. Um, Mason is such an energetic player. I want that energy against Porto where Chelsea are going to need it in a big, big, very tense game for Chelsea. Um, so I have no problem resting Mason for this game, bringing him back for the game midweek against Porto because there's so many games coming up. We trust Thomas Tuchel when he rotates players. And I think this front three, which is, is sort of the blockbuster front three, you know, the front three Chelsea invested so much money on last summer. I want to see them, how they can work against a team like West Brom and hopefully 
get Chelsea the three points. Another thing as well, uh, Christian Pulisic could be in with a shout here. I think he had a really good international break with the USA, uh, very much starring against uh, Northern Ireland. I think that was the first game he played for the USA, scoring from the penalty spot. And all around, his performance was really impressive, getting back to where you want Christian Pulisic. So Pulisic, I think, may have a big hand in the remaining weeks of the season. I think there's a few attacking players that you're starting to feel a lot, a lot more confident about that could be real threats in front of goal where Thomas Tuchel needs it in very tight games as it gets very tense in the remaining weeks of the season. That's why I don't have Pulisic in here and I think Ziyech, Werner and Havertz will be the front three tomorrow. But let me know your lineups for the game tomorrow against West Brom. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this preview. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Sonachel. See, have a great Easter weekend and I'll see you again. Oh, 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 oh,